Lost the sea, the second one. This is the earlier video you may have seen, and in this video we're going to finish up on uh, the legal aspect of the law of the sea, as per the law of the sea convention. First, take a look at uh, this. Um, these dots are all about ships, uh, you know, sailing just south of uh, Sri Lanka. Let's uh, take a look at this in a better uh, view. Mm, this is actually a video or rather graph from graphic from um, quite a while back that was in 2012 so many years ago but take a look at it the number of ships you know sailing just south of Sri Lanka all these dots comprise a ship one of the dot is a ship and every other dot is the same so it's the biggest sea lane to the east and from east to the west the biggest ever and the dots you may see turning this way are ships you know reaching the Indian harbors Indian ports so Columbus serves not just uh, Indian ports it even serves Bangladesh because it's cheaper for these uh, two nations to let the goods to be unloaded into Sri Lanka and then transship them uh, into their harbors to the west of India and to the east of India including Bangladesh so it's a massively important port Colombo right so getting back into the uh, main thing take a look 60,000 ships pass Sri Lanka's territorial seas and over 5,000 enter Sri Lanka's harbor Colombo harbor yellow means actually uh, container traffic right Red means the oil traffic. So through Sri Lanka, it's majority container traffic, but there's a bit of red also, right? So uh, oil traffic is also heavy. You can see here, heavy amount of oil traffic happening. So uh, let's move on to the next one. Yeah, we're look, looking at the contiguous exclusive economic zone and the international waters. Take a look at the picture. So the first one, territorial sea, and then the exclusive economic zone and the high seas so here we uh, kind of uh, avoided the part of uh, what you call as uh, contiguous zone contiguous zone starts somewhere within here right so it stays uh, beyond 12 kilometers of the territorial sea and extends 12 kilometers so from the territorial sea 200 nautical miles is the exclusive economic zone and beyond that is a high seas so uh, as we learned earlier plenty of local laws so that virtually every single law of the land applies to the territorial sea only some of it applies to the contiguous zone an exclusive economic zone is for economic purposes so quite a lot of the national laws don't apply there we we'll learn that part yeah you know, Sri Lanka Navy has a huge role to do it's a daunting task the task being uh, you know it has over half a million nautical square miles of uh, territory to protect our con uh, our exclusive economic zone is that big so it's a huge task for the Sri Lanka Navy you know to protect uh, a territory you know infinitely bigger than the territory of Sri Lanka 500,000 square miles kilometers right so with limited resources a tiny coast guard the name is having a real challenge task yes the safety navigation is to be ensured uh, when we set up uh, our territorial rights there are a string of there's a string of um, lighthouses maintained by uh, Sri Lanka Navy especially uh, along the coast of Sri Lanka to the south of Sri Lanka to the east of Sri Lanka earlier there were more but now the number required is less along with it uh, navy and the coast guard has a duty to protect the sea lane from natural as well as uh, other events such as the piracy so sri lanka's navy is technically handy tied right because of the massive traffic that comes into our territorial waters so a lot of our exclusive economic zone need to be protected and of course for that we need a uh, far more assets than what we have at the moment this is the territory Sri Lanka Navy has to take care of legally. They are legally bound to take care of. 
is a massive area but due to the fact of massive number of ships coming way close to Sri Lanka and having a huge sea lane here our work is cut out um, added to that there's a bit of poaching happening here and before that there was uh, you know the war and all so only now Navy is developing its blue water capacities a bit by bit some of the nations have helped Sri Lanka to uh, have uh, some assets like Australia, uh, USA, India, uh, even Japan, right? They donated uh, ships to Sri Lanka Navy over the last uh, couple of years to replenish and improve the capacity of the Sri Lanka Navy because it's very, very vital in order to protect the traffic in the Indian Ocean. This privacy happens very, very close to uh, Sri Lanka now. So uh, it's a huge role expected out of uh, our assets here. Right, so now coming into the contiguous zone, the 12 kilometers beyond territorial sea, that's the contiguous zone. What kind of laws are used there? One, number one, yeah, any prevent, any violation of our customs can be prevented. Financial could be, yeah, maybe financial dealings. Some countries set up, uh, you know, in some countries, uh, you know, the ships uh, take part in illegal cash uh, transactions, like, right? you know, out of the country to stay out of the tax zone of the country. To prevent it, we have the power. And yes, illegal migration out of the Sri Lanka and sometimes into country also, right? Uh, it's an issue. And of course, uh, the ships, when they pass through Sri Lanka, they cannot uh, dump their garbage. We can prevent that from happening. And yes, any law that is broken in the territorial sea and a particular person or the ship that has broken uh, the role, uh, sorry, particular law in the territorial sea, if it escapes into the con uh, contiguous zone, we can take action. So any violator of the law in the territorial sea can be chased if he tries to escape into the contiguous zone and we can ask, accept, uh, sorry, we can arrest him. That is possible. So other than that, right, uh, you know, imagine, uh, you know, a crime happens inside the contiguous zone, our chance to uh, taking legal action is highly minimized under the uh, Law of the Sea Convention. Law of the Sea Convention gives us 100% right to protect our legal rights, criminal, civil, everything in the territorial waters. But in the contiguous zone, our rights are highly limited to only these things. That means what? Okay, some fiscal violation, immigration violation, right? Or maybe some illegality is uh, going to happen, such a ship is coming, so we can prevent it from entering. That we can do. Oh, a ship is trying to escape after doing an illegal conduct. Yes, we can stop it. That, that can be done. And, uh, you know, the ship is violating the environmental rules. Yeah, we can do something. But other than that, uh, other aspects of the law does not cover uh, the contiguous zone. Yeah. The Navy or the Coast Guard or the police, right, or the law enforcement has the right of hot pursuit if a ship has done a crime within our territorial waters or within the inland sea or inside Sri Lanka and if such a ship is escaping we have the right of hot pursuit right chasing the ship into the contiguous zone beyond the contiguous zone also we have the right imagine a ship has been suspected of being terrorism or something yes we have the action there we have the action Sri Lanka can take action way into the deep seas there we can chase and take action that is a possibility but um, you know uh, with regard to a crime imagine someone has done a killing inside the ship in the contiguous zone then Sri Lanka can't take any action the particular flag state that means uh, the flag that the ship is flying that flag represent the country where the ship has been registered right in that country only the legal action can be taken the coastal state cannot take any legal action some other rights also exist in order with regard to the archaeological, let's say the shipwrecks and all. Yeah, we have the right to supervise. That kind of powers we do have. And we have an impending threat from beyond the ocean coming towards Sri Lanka. There is such a threat, we can stop at the contiguous zone even beyond that. We have the right. Action against terrorism, action against piracy. Yes, we have the uh, power to do that. But... Uh, the limitation is far higher with regard to the legal action in the contiguous zone as opposed to the com complete rights we enjoy under uh, the laws in the territorial sea. 
Uh, this is the tale of Sri Lanka. Huge number of uh, narcotics enter Sri Lanka. You can see the routes, right? Primarily through uh, Pakistan, via Bang Bang sorry, Afghanistan, through those, right? These are typical boats used pretty much in the Dubai and all. They come, they bring the stuff, right? Loads of narcotics into Sri Lanka, mostly by sea. And from Tamil Nadu, the Kerala Ganja comes into Sri Lanka by sea. So, yeah, such uh, trans such uh, transportation of illegal produce, yeah, we can stop. We have the complete power to do. And if such a ship uh, tries to escape after loading the goods or something like that, we can chase and uh, take action against them. And people migrating, illegal migration, right? It's a problem that Sri Lanka faces. Uh, the problem being uh, not just that this, that uh, Sri Lankans also, some of the Sri Lankans also have fled the country via boats. Uh, not just that, but even the people from Myanmar, Afghanistan, uh, Pakistan, India, even they come to Sri Lanka to uh, escape via shipping facilities in Sri Lanka. So there, Sri Lanka Navy or the Coast Guard uh, has the power uh, to do the hot pursuit and apprehend them because this, this is a violation. Illegally getting out of the country is a violation. Yeah, we can take action. Talking about the exclusive economic zone. Now, so now you know uh, the difference between the territorial sea and the contiguous zone. Territorial sea, we can use all our laws. Contiguous zone, we could only use a limited number of laws. Like what? Such as for sanitation, um, environmental damage such as for you know um, something like migration illegally or someone has committed a crime in territorial sea and tries to escape there yeah, we can chase and stop take action but a crime happening inside the contiguous zone might be difficult for us to take action unless it is related to terrorism or piracy or some illegal conduct typical criminality we may have a problem taking action in the territorial sea just yes, we may have the chance Exclusive economic zone is mostly for what? Yeah, economic activities. 200 nautical miles. This is where much of our half a million square mile kilometer territory comes under. Yeah, natural resources. And we have the sovereign right. We have the total right to utilize the natural resources in the massive contiguous economic zone and beyond that gigantic, uh, you know, exclusive economic zone. And all the way down to the seabed, including the seabed. Remember that as well as a subsoil. That means we could dig for oil or any other mineral in the uh, whatever, right? Into uh, the seabed in the exclusive economic zone. Sri Lanka hasn't done it. We haven't done much with regard to uh, exclusive, eco exclusive economic zone at all, literally. Very little has been done. Our fishing catch is pretty less, right? We'll find out later. So immense amount of resources do exist here but we are yet to uh, get the full benefit out of the resources that we are inherited with right and immense amount of uh, treasures right or rather economic value is there and something that sri lanka should uh, think about or seriously consider exploiting because we have the legal right given under the united nations yeah um you know the law of the sea convention of course, there are some limitations applicable. I told you, we discussed earlier that when it's a natural island, yes, it gets 12 miles and uh, territorial sea, further 12 miles, contiguous zone. But can you set up artificial islands as, as China has done in South China Sea? No. For artificial islands, you don't get any uh, cover. They won't be covered under, you know, the installations set up artificially will not be coming under, uh, you know, the 12 mile limit. Let's say, for example, um, you know, Colombo city, port city has come up with the artificial, not an island, but artificial extension of Sri Lanka. From there, you don't count uh, 12 miles to, you know, create a bit of a, you know, kind of a dent into the sea in our, con you know, let's say the territorial sea. That is not possible. It has to be natural rocks, natural islands for us to claim our rights uh, as per, you know, the you know, boundaries of uh, territory rights, but not for artificial islands. China is fighting hard for it, right? So, 
and yes we have the right and duty to protect and preserve the marine environment in the exclusive economic zone that's our duty which we have to ensure you know few years back you may have seen a massive fire in a empty diamond empty new diamond huge oil tanker it was a very large uh, crude carrier it caught fire off uh, Batticalo a near disaster was averted now, Sri Lanka should have the assets to prevent such a disaster from happening close to Colombo Migambo we had the Express Pearl disaster where there was a immense amount of damage that occurred to our beaches and all we should have the physical capacity to uh, prevent such things from happening that's our duty and we should have that ability to apprehend any wrongdoing doing by a ship as well with regard to that let's move on yeah you know the bluefin tuna is one of the most precious of uh, the fishing industry it's highly priced and Sri Lanka is rather known for the bluefin tuna um, but our duty to catch bluefin tuna is limited to the exclusive economic zone we can't go beyond that few years back uh, you know some Sri Lankan fishermen were caught fishing for bluefin, bluefin tuna south of our exclusive economic zone I'll go back to the map again um, you know way beyond the exclusive economic zone in the Andaman seas and all then uh, European Union banned import of bluefin tuna right uh, from Sri Lanka for a while where after Sri Lanka promised to uh, keep our fleet within the exclusive economic zone in order to uh, prevent them from venturing into the high seas high seas should be kept for fish to be replenished to breed better rather than being caught by the fishing nets so now every Sri Lankan fishing trawler has a GPS uh, apparatus fixed to ensure that the ship stays inside the exclusive economic zone we don't need to go anywhere we have our seas full of fish right these are our fish stats we catch about half a million metric tons of fish per year not enough when you look at the size of the sea right that means technically one ton per one uh, square kilometer right per year not enough and out of that we export only a very very little see only 30,000 metric tons of course the value is 50 billion rupees but in dollar terms it's not that much and of that much of the catch of the catch uh, catch comes from uh, the coastal fishing not from deep sea fishing our deep sea production is very poor that means our production from the exclusive economic zone is just 200,000 metric tons so there's a lot that Sri Lanka needs to do to exploit our resources and something that Sri Lanka has sadly missed doing. What about the treasures in the you know, exclusive economic zone? Territorial sea. Territorial sea treasure begin, belongs to Sri Lanka. Ask no question about it. And territorial, uh, beyond the territorial sea, in the contiguous zone, again, the treasures belong to Sri Lankan government. There are lots of fishing, uh, sorry, shipping uh, wrecks shipwrecks we call them right uh, south of Sri Lanka because for thousands of years so many thousands and thousands of ships would have gone uh, past in Sri Lanka because we are part of the Silk Route um, so uh, when that happened when that was happening immense amount of shipwrecks would have happened with lots of treasures or gold or whatever right with them so Sri Lanka is technically dotted our seas are dotted with uh, shipwrecks one reason Arthur C. Clarke, a famous uh, scientist writer, right, came to Sri Lanka was not the sky or the space, but the shipwrecks. He was interested in our sea rather than the space. So, uh, you know, any shipwreck in uh, the contiguous zone or territorial sea belongs to the government, but beyond that, what about the exclusive economic zone? Uh, that may belong to the person who finds it. There was this particular case with regard to Atocha, uh, about 35 miles square mile, sorry, uh, nautical miles uh, south of uh, Key West, Florida, America. An explorer called Mel Fisher found a shipwreck called Atocha, that's the name of the ship, with over $450 million value of gold, silver, and other things. 
the Supreme Court said all of it belongs to him because it's located out of the American zone. The United States do not follow, uh, we know that, right? Uh, United Nations Law of the Sea Convention, they go, go by the uh, customary law. Under customary law, the country cannot, uh, you know, own, you know, territory, claim territory beyond the continental shelf. And this is beyond that. So America lost it and Melfisher uh, got all of it. High seas. Who owns it? Well, nobody does. Whatever happens in the high seas on board a ship is a flag state that has a right to take action. There are a number of ships registered by Sri Lanka, foreign known as well as Sri Lanka owned. Imagine on board such a ship in the high seas. A crime happens, then Sri Lanka has to take action. Not the coastal state, right? Uh, close to which the ship was sailing. Coastal state can take action only when the wrong happens inside the territorial sea. Coastal, take, coastal state can take action um, if someone tries to escape into the contiguous zone after doing the wrong thing inside the territorial sea. Coastal state can take action with regard to uh, immigration, fiscal law, sanitary, environmental violations in the uh, continuous, uh, sorry, contiguous sea. Coastal state can take action if there's a crime related to ter I mean, terrorism or piracy is happening. Yes, there are no question because there are other conventions uh, to which Sri Lanka has signed, so we are duty bound to take action. But other than that, our legal actions are strictly limited, mostly limited is the language actually, to what you call as uh, territorial sea. High seas, an action there, you know, has to be done by the ship. Uh, I mean the country where the ship was registered. We call it the flag state. See how much of high seas we have? Two-thirds of the world oceans. 95% of the occupied habitat. Only 1% of the high seas are protected. The rest is open seas. There are no laws there, right? Of course, the flag state can take action if something happens on board one of their ships. So this was an action taken by Sri Lanka Navy in 2007 or 8 uh, when they spotted uh, uh, with some good intelligence from India, US and all of uh, LTTE owned uh, floating warehouses of weapons and ordnance and all, right? They used to be stationed in deep seas. So the ships used to, LTT used to bring ships uh, there to load and keep them in the ships here in the deep seas. And then the LTT boats used to come here and take off them, take them off and uh, land them in Sri Lanka. So it was an operation going done by LTT for such a long time, but Sri Lanka Navy finally got wind of it and uh, they were able to uh, destroy them in the deep seas. We have the right. Yeah, we have the right. Because it was a wrong that's definitely done against the state of Sri Lanka. Right? Yeah, Sri Lanka has a right of taking action in the deep seas. So, we are thinking about having a deep sea convention, but not yet decided, right? Because huge amount of seas are not under anybody's supervision. Take a look at it. This white border is, okay, the exclusive economic zone. But beyond the white border, the light blue, light blue is completely free of laws, right? Unless the particular ship complains to the flag state, of a wrong that has happened, nothing can be done. So there's a bad need of uh, laws to cover, you know, 90% of uh, our oceans, right? Only 1% is covered by laws. Sometimes the ships go through the straits, like the Strait of Hormuz here, Malacca Strait, uh, Pork Strait, of course, the ships can't go through because of the, you know, and then the Gibraltar Strait here, right? Strait is sort of narrow sea band where the ships have to go through and it's kind of sandwiched between two land masses. They are, you know, the ships have the legal right to pass through. It cannot be impeded or disturbed. That's the right of passage. Right? And remember that a flag state, what's a flag state? The country that has registered the ship has a complete right to take legal action against their ships anywhere in the world. Imagine there's a ship registered by Sri Lanka, let's say the ship is owned by a South African, okay, it's a Sri Lankan registered ship, we call it. If 
that ship has done something wrong, Sri Lanka Navy can, if they want to, right, go and take an action against them. Or Sri Lanka Navy, Sri Lanka can take legal action against them in the in Sri Lanka itself. Can cancel the registration. Every ship flying in the sea must be registered in some country. That means it must be flying a flag of a country. If not, right, action is possible, right, by the first country that the ship is sighted. Because so the flag in the ship does not mean the flag of the country of the owners of the ship. The flag in the ship means the flag of the country the ship is registered. Ships are not registered almost everywhere. Some countries are pretty popular for registration due to laws, right? Like Panama, like uh, Bermuda. There are places where it's easy to register ships. So uh, many ships are registered in uh, those countries. Sri Lanka also has registered some of the ships, but I think our laws are rather tough. So we have lesser ships asking for registration. Okay. Few questions are there for you to think. Imagine these questions. Sri Lanka Navy apprehends a foreign trawler in the act of illegally fishing about 20 nautical miles away from the sea. Take a look at the question. Sri Lanka Navy apprehends a foreign trawler in the act of illegally fishing about 20 nautical miles away from the sea. What can be done? I go back. Let's take a look at the map. Here. 20 nautical miles away means beyond the territorial water. So it's in the contiguous zone doing an illegal act of fishing. Can we take action? Yes, because it's an infringement of our, yeah, you know, customs. Sri Lanka can take action there. Right? We can, we have the right to take action because uh, um, it can be argued that it's a you know infringement of our customs so sri lanka has the right to take action if legal fishing happens even inside the exclusive economic zone we can take uh, legal action of course arrest of ships and all there are some limitations but our right exists right because we are given what you call as uh, here if i come sovereign rights so any violation of the fishing rights would result in legal action let's go for the next question Coast Guard gives chase to a boat that appeared to have delivered a consignment of narcotics to Mathara Beach. The boat is finally captured about 50 nautical miles away. What is that? So crime has happened inside the territory of Sri Lanka and the ship has uh, escaped, the boat has escaped. Now we are giving chase to the boat and catch the ship, sorry, capture the particular boat beyond the territorial sea, beyond the contiguous zone, inside the exclusive economic zone. Can we do it? Yes. Hot pursuit is possible. Even into the deep sea, we have the right to do that. Because they've done a crime, right? And consignment of narcotic, narcotic is an internationally wrong crime. Yeah. Next one. Two boats open fire at each other. Possibly smugglers, right? About 220 nautical miles away from the land and the Navy is sending a ship to investigate and apprehend the parties in all. What do you think we can do? Now, it's beyond the contiguous zone. Is beyond the territorial sea. Territorial sea, just definitely we can take action. Contiguous zone, yeah, maybe terrorism or something we could use. Uh, threat to their own country we can consider. If whatever happens inside the contiguous zone is a th can be considered as a threat to the country, yes, we can take action. They basically fire at each other. Smugglers, we can take action. How about the 220 nautical miles means even beyond the exclusive economic zone right that's 200 miles can we take action yes they are smugglers so doing an illegal action yes we can do that yeah yes Sri Lanka has a right to take action because you are bound duty bound to take action because this, this could uh, disturb the peace of uh, navigation and you are bound to protect it okay so uh, the purpose of the lesson today was, or the video today was, to have a good understanding about the basics of uh, exclusive economic zone, contiguous zone, as well as uh, uh, the deep seas as well. And let's see how the deep sea law is coming up. Okay then, so uh, catch you in a, um, another lesson uh, with regard to probably uh, carriage of goods by the sea.
Take care.